Hello students, welcome to this YouTube channel. Now it is my first lecture on semester 1 and today I will discuss on the particular topic Ovid's Metamorphosis. It falls under the group of poetry sections and it is in your CC T2 paper that is European classical literature paper. Now before going to discuss the fundamental sections or the basic sections that are in your syllabus that is uh, the particular texts that have been selected for you let me consider some of the important aspects or some of the introductory perspectives on Ovid's metamorphosis. You know that among the all the writings of Latin authors few have appealed to a wider public or had more effect on later literature than the Metamorphosis by Ovid. In this particular work, the poet has gathered together a rich assortment of tales which have one element in common. They all deal with transformations. As you can find that the title of this particular collection is metamorphosis. So what is metamorphosis? What are the basic meanings of metamorphosis? You will find certainly that the term metamorphosis is actually meaning a kind of transformation. Now when you will go through the poems or when you will go through the stories that have been taken for consideration here, you will certainly find that all these stories have one thing in common and that is the sheer form of transformation. Now whether the transformation has to be considered in terms of the body, whether it can be considered in terms of your spirit or maybe it is the psychological transformation that is at the core or at the basis. So fundamentally whenever we will go through the texts of Ovid's Metamorphosis, we will find that a certain kind of transformation is at the core, is at the base. Ovid tells us of cows changed into ordered harmony, of animals turned to stone, of men and women who become trees or animals, stones or stars. With this slender unity of theme, he has produced a poem of 15 books. You will find that in this particular text, there are 15 different books. Now, in your syllabus, there are some stories that have been taken from book 3, book 4 and book 6. But Ovid, Ovid's Metamorphosis, it consists of 15 books. Now, ultimately what I am trying to suggest here that with the help of these 15 books, Ovid holds the reader's attention to the end. The telling of stories must have been one of the earliest forms of entertainment, but it has lost none of its fascination. And in Metamorphosis, Ovid reveals himself as a prince of storytellers, to be specific. The tales he has to offer are not new. He has collected them from the pages of the Greek poets, whose works formed an essential part of the myths. From Latin folklore, he has the essential part of education of every Roman. He has taken some references from the previous anthologies of the Greek myths. He has taken information from Latin folklore and even from farther afield, from Babylon and the East. But he has infused new life into the old stories, retailing them with the inimitable grace and practised ease of one who knows well how to hold his audience. The result is a treasure house of myth and legend, which was read with delight in his own day and has continued to charm succeeding generations, providing a source from which the whole of Western European literature has derived inspiration. And yet, this poem, colored with rhetoric, it is true, but full of the freshness and charm of a world newly born, is the work of one who has 
or who was at the same time among the most sophisticated of the Latin authors or Latin writers to be specific. Now, when the general plan for metamorphosis had suggested itself to Ovid, there was no lack of material for him to use. All the base known myths could be found in the works of Homer or of the Greek dramatists, with which he would naturally be familiar from his school days. Moreover, the idea of collecting such tales into omnibus volumes was one that had already appealed on poets of Hellenistic age. We know of such a compilation, the Ornithogenia, they assigned to one bios, which dealt with the transformation of men into birds, and Nicander of Polophon had been responsible for another collection, which Ovid probably used in Rome itself. Ovid's friend and contemporary, Aemilius Mesa, had translated the Ornithogenia and the Greek Parthenius, the tutor to Virgil and Tiberius, had produced a work entitled Metamorphosis. It is impossible to say how much Ovid may have derived from these earlier writings, but there is no doubt that both in its scope, embracing some 250 stories, and in the elegance of style and treatment, Ovid's metamorphosis is unique. The narrative skill which the poet possesses, or rather possessed, was employed to weave his tales into one vast and elaborate tapestry, an appropriate metaphor for the pictorial effect of Ovid's writing is sometimes almost overwhelming. Now, in this particular discussion, I, I am not going too far with the introductory perspectives of Ovid's metamorphosis. Let us consider the syllabus. As I have already mentioned in the syllabus section, that this particular you know, in this particular syllabus, you will get, there are three stories that have been taken for consideration. The first one is from book three, and it is the story of Pentheus. The second one is from book four, and it is the story of Pyramus and Thisbe. And the third one is from book six, and that is the story of Philomela and Tiriu and Procne. So, without any delay, let us take the particular reference to the first story, that is the story of Pentheus. Stay attached. We will continue this in our next lecture. Thank you.